After months away, John Marston has returned to his loved ones. While trying to rebuild his ranch and win back the trust of his family, Marston awaits whatever life will throw at him. As he drives home one evening from an errand, he ponders whether a man can ever escape his past. He is a man who is ready for anything. Almost anything. <laughs> After years of seeing zombies in games and movies, you, or at least someone you know, would probably have some idea of what to do if they were to attack tomorrow. That wasn't the case a hundred years ago though. So when the dead come back to life in Red Dead Redemption's world, neither protagonist John Marsden, nor any of the numerous other memorable characters that show up in this humorous, horror-themed DLC have a clue what's going on. Reprising the role of Marsden, you deal with the undead in much the same way you deal with bad guys in Red Dead Redemption by killing them, again. Unfortunately, Undead Nightmare's enemies don't pose as much of a challenge as their cowboy counterparts. The living impaired don't use guns, don't use cover, and don't ride horses. For the most part, they just head straight for you, and they're really only dangerous when they attack in numbers. Most of the zombies have the appearance of regular townsfolk who, post-mortem, are in varying stages of decay. There are three special types of zombie to look out for, though which had some much needed challenge and variety. Bolters are skinny, fast, and like to move on all fours. Bruisers are large and slow moving, but can charge you like a rhino. And wretches have a strange green glow and will spit at you from long range. Despite these differences, all of the undead can generally be dealt with most effectively up close and personal. Headshots are the best way to kill them and headshots the most easily achieved when you forgo aiming completely and just squeeze the trigger in melee range. You can get some satisfying kills this way for sure, but it's unfortunate that you're not encouraged to engage in more traditional gunplay. Exacerbating this issue, at least early on, is the fact that ammo can be quite scarce. You can scavenge bullets from the bodies of zombie gunslingers, but you're likely to find yourself using the new torch weapon out of necessity, and not just because it's fun to set the horde ablaze. I missed her! You see my Uncle Mordecai? Burn him! Burn him real good, you hear? Since much of the population is either dead or undead, Red Dead Redemption's world is much quieter in Undead Nightmare. Every town on the map has been overrun by zombies at the start of the game, and you have to liberate said towns before you can accept missions or even sleep and save your progress in them. There are a handful of survivors in each town, and you can aid them not only by fighting the undead on their behalf, but also by sharing your ammunition with them. Initially, it's quite exciting to feel like you're reclaiming these places for humanity, but before you've even made it out of the first of the three territories, you're likely to feel repetition setting in. Sure, the locations are different, but the challenge isn't, and it's far too easy in some of the towns to simply climb up onto a rooftop that the zombies can't reach, and then pick them off like fish in a barrel. Thankfully, a few of the story-driven missions require you to do things a little more creative than just kill the undead, but there aren't nearly as many different mission types as in the original game. If you want more variety in Undead Nightmare, you have to stray from the story-critical path and go look for it. There are missing persons to locate and return to their loved ones. There are new challenges and outfits to complete. And there are mythological horses to find and break so that you can ride them. Specifically, you get to ride the Four Horses of the Apocalypse. Pestilence, War, Famine, and Death. All four of these nags look great, and each offers a different gameplay advantage. War sets enemies on fire if they get too close, and Pestilence is resistant enough to pain that even attacks from undead cougars are nothing to worry about. Famine's perk is supposed to be unlimited stamina, but that was true for all four of the horses during our playthrough. Undead Nightmare's ending is every bit as excellent as Red Dead Redemption's. And yes, in case you're wondering, you do have the option to finish up challenges and stuff after you finish it. You can also check out an all-new multiplayer mode called Undead Overrun that's a lot of fun. This co-op mode for two to four players challenges you to survive against increasingly tough waves of zombies for as long as possible. Interestingly, you choose one of four different loadouts to use every time you play, and you're also able to revive fallen teammates. Undead Nightmare isn't a more of the same add-on. Its combat isn't as good, its story isn't as compelling, and its missions aren't as varied. 
Nevertheless, there's a whole lot of fun to be had here for $10, and this is a great excuse to return to the world of Red Dead Redemption. Man, kind-hearted neighbors turned into savage, flesh-eating monsters. Did you see it? It'll make a fantastic movie. Who would enjoy that? What? What kind of sick person would like that? My kind sir. The lowest common denominator! My people. You're gone, friend. 